and welcome to Central Christian Church. We're so glad you could join with us today in person and online, and we welcome each and every person here today. You might notice that I am not Cameo. Um, Cameo slipped and fell on the ice and cannot be with us today, so we lift up Cameo in our prayers today. Um, today, the flowers have been given by Margie Jones in memory of her father. Thank you, Margie, for sharing your dad with us today. We have weekday gatherings on Tuesday at 11 o'clock. Bring your brown bag lunch and join us. Um, you can come and fellowship and share a meal. Um, we call it lunch with the pastor. And so come. Um, lately, we've just been talking and catching up and getting to know each other. But we'd love to have you join us. And we're going to start having a little devotional. And then if you're able to stay and help volunteer, that's even better. Um, choir has started back rehearsing, started this morning, I believe. And if you have not yet joined with the choir, but you would, be, would like to, plan on getting here at 9 o'clock on Sunday mornings. They meet in the chapel. All voices are welcome. They even said I could join the choir. So if they say I can, that means you can too. So we'd love to have you join. If you are a guest here today, we encourage you to fill out the communication card, which is in the pew. And if you'd share any information with us that you are comfortable sharing, it'll help us to make sure we get connected. We always are needing volunteers around here. So whether it's Sunday mornings or sometime during the week, if you have some time to spare, we have a lot of projects to be done. Yes, Dick? Yep, that's on my list. I was getting to that one every Wednesday afternoon at 2 o'clock. Dick leads a um, Bible study. They call it the Free Range Study, and all are welcome to join him and that group here on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock. Um, only a quarter of our active participants are helping with our year-round fundraiser through King Supers. So if you've not yet got your King Supers card attached to the church, let us know and we'll help get you connected. Um, two last final important announcements this coming Wednesday. It's not only Valentine's Day, but it's more importantly, it's Ash Wednesday. So we will join here in our sanctuary at noon for a brief Ash Wednesday service. That service normally is about 20 to 30 minutes long. So we pray that you can join us this Ash Wednesday. And if not in person, we encourage you to join us in spirit. And finally, today is a very special today. Today is Pastor Dick Laszlo's 91st birthday. And so I thought maybe we could join together in singing Dick a rousing rendition of Happy Birthday. Yes, well, happy birthday, and thank you for living your life in service to Jesus the Christ. I now invite our worship team forward so we can get started with our opening hymn. It'll be Open My Eyes That I May See in your, bo in your book or on the screen. Please stand as you're able and join us in singing. Once again, that's Open My Eyes That I May See. It's on page 586 in the hymnal or up on the screen. and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee. Ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me. Spirit divine, open my ears that I may of truth thou send 
loudest clear. And while the wave notes fall on my ear, everything false will disappear. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my mouth and let me bear gladly the warm truth everywhere. Open my heart and let me prepare Love with thy children thus to share. Silently now I wait for thee. Ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my heart, illumine me. Spirit divine. Most holy and loving God, we come into your presence this morning and we give you all thanks and praise for another opportunity to gather together, whether in person or online, and to sing your praises and to hear your word anew. God, we ask that you open our eyes, open our ears, open our hearts to really hear you and feel you this morning. Oh God, we pray that all we sing, say, think, and do will be pleasing unto you now and forevermore. And may this act of worship be a symbol of our love and devotion to you now and forever. God, we can't wait to worship you, and we love you so much. Amen. You may be seated, and I invite Eden Ford for our scripture reading this morning. Psalm 50, 1 through 6. The mighty one, God of the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and does not silent, keep silence. Before him is the devouring fire and a mighty tempest all around him. He calls to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me my faithful ones, who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Good morning. We're small but mighty this morning, so several of our friends are not feeling well this morning, so we sure miss them, and we hope everyone who's home today not feeling well is feeling better soon. But I brought a magic trick today, and I have something underneath one of my cups, and I'm wondering if you can tell me which cup has something underneath it. Ooh, Eden thinks that one. What makes you think that? Because it's shaking more than all the others. What about you? Do you have a guess on which one? How would we be able to tell if I lifted it up? No. What would be a way we could tell? Maybe, maybe if I lift this up just to... Did you see anything? What'd you see? There's something under that one? I kind of gave it away, huh? That's why I'm not a magician. <laughs> so, well, this one, it's kind of like the story we're going to hear for today. Because the story, our scripture lesson for today comes from Mark. And it's about the time that Jesus and a few of the disciples went up on top of the mountain. 
And while we were there, Jesus became dazzling white. It was called transfiguration. And he transformed right in front of them into the glory of God, all in white. And it says that they were terrified, the disciples. They didn't know what to think. And when I started thinking about that scripture, I started thinking that that moment in time to those disciples so long ago, they got just a glimpse, just a glimpse of what it really meant to follow Jesus the Christ. And today, often we get little glimpses, just kind of like, what's underneath there? Just a little glimpse. We don't really know what it is, but we get glimpses, we get moments of being in where we get to see God's light shining in our life. We get to see God working in our world and in the world of others. We get glimpses into eternity. And sometimes we fall down, and that's okay too, um, because Jesus is there to pick us up. So what I want you to remember, and I want you to listen today for the scripture. Forget that, but listen today for the scripture and listen to what it says. And I want you to think about When's a time, because you might have a time in your life already, when you have felt God transforming your life, or you felt God working in your life? And if you don't have one yet, don't worry. One's coming. But I want you to think about it. And I was going to lift it up and let you get a treat, but if you'd pick one of those up off the ground, you'd also be doing me a favor. Um, If you want to know out there what's underneath it, it's Hershey's Kisses. Um, Because I believe that God loves us all the time, and that God gives us hugs and kisses in the way of our moms and dads, of our friends, of people who call us on hard days or give us smiles when we arrive. And so today's story is a story about God's love and about God's presence in our life. So if you'll grab a Hershey's kiss, you can even have two since you're being helpful. And then let's have a prayer before you all head out. Thank you. Oh, you guys are the best. All right, let's have a prayer. God, we thank you for these children gathered here and for those joining with us online this morning. God, we thank you for the love and laughter they bring into our lives. And God, we thank you for allowing us to be a part of their journey of faith. Show up, God, in their life so that they may always feel your love, your presence, and your spirit within them. God, we thank thank you for them and for their families. For it's in your loving name we pray. Amen. You all can go have a seat. Awesome. And um, you won't be leaving today during worship. So if you'll stay till the end, that would be great. Awesome. Thank you. All right. please, Please stand as you're able and join us in singing our next hymn which is surely the presence of the Lord. You can find that on page 263 in your hymnals or up on the screen. of angels wings I see glory on each face surely the presence of the Lord is in this place surely the presence of the Lord is in this place I can feel his mighty power and his grace I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. You may be seated. As we come to this time of prayer, there are a few names I'd like to lift up so that we can join our hearts in the same direction. Again, today we give God thanks, Dick, for you and for your life and for your 91 years 
on this earth, and we pray that this is the best year yet. And Miss Jo, it's so good that you're up to being with us this morning, and it's great to have you and to see you again this morning. Amen, amen. Yep, a gift to the world for sure. Um, I also want to lift up today Jim and Beth. Um, Jim is back in the hospital right now. They're hoping maybe he'll get to go home today, but we definitely want to be praying for Jim and for Beth and for his medical team. As I mentioned, Cameo slipped on the ice and messed up her shoulder and I believe her wrist and her ankle, so we pray for Cameo and her family during this time. Be careful out there. Um, it only takes one step. It can change your world. Um, we remember Bobby. Bobby had a procedure done on her tooth this week, and we remember Bobby. Um, our accountant, Kimberly, is really struggling with a hip replacement she had that's not going well, and so we lift up um, Kimberly in our prayers. Wendy's had some health stuff going on, and we lift up. We continue to pray, Wendy, for you. Um, and then I figure this is a good place for us to celebrate with one another. And so a big celebration is we celebrate with Ethan, who bought his first car yesterday. Um, and I think that's pretty awesome for 18 years old. So Ethan, thanks for letting us celebrate with you. And sorry to embarrass you, but that's my job. So um, are there other joys or concerns you want to lift up today? As I look around, I know we all have things that weigh heavy on our hearts and minds. I give God thanks that you all made it here safely today. Um, with no, I had my truck slide once, so be careful going home. And I guess I would be remiss if I did not mention um, prayers today for all the football players. I hear there's a big game today people get real excited about. So prayers that all the football players stay safe and that they have fun and they remember it's not about winning or losing. Um, I don't think they believe me. But um, so let us turn to God for a word of prayer. God of love, God of forgiveness, God of salvation, we come into your presence, O oh Lord, and we give you all thanks and praise. For God, we know that all good gifts come from you, and we know that we are surrounded by a multitude of blessings, so many blessings that so often we miss catching them. God, we stand in awe of your presence. We stand in humble adoration that you continue to call us, that you continue to love us even on our worst days and that you forgive us time and time again as you wait for us to realize the glory all around us, which is you, found in your Son, Jesus the Christ. And God, we give you all thanks and praise. And Lord, as we come into your presence, we know that you indeed are the divine healer. We trust in your good news and we trust in your promises, that they are true and certain. And God, we lift up this day for healing our friend Jim and Beth. We remember before you, Paul and Marilyn, we give you thanks, O oh God, for Dick and Joe being able to be here today. Lord, we pray for relief and healing for Kimberly and for Bobby and for Cameo. We remember this day Wendy, and we ask, O oh Lord, that you pour your healing spirit into not just the names listed aloud, but the millions of names, O oh Lord, the millions that go unspoken on our hearts. And Lord, we come to you today in, with our whole selves, admitting before you those times that we let you down when we put our strength above your salvation, when we decide to go our own way instead of looking to where your light is shining. God, we admit before you our resentments, our shame and our failures, and God, we hand it all over to you. And we ask that you clean our hearts and help us to see with new eyes, with eyes full of compassion, 
adoration, love. God, we ask that you help us to stay focused on what really matters in this life and help us not get distracted by the ways of this world, but rather help us to keep our hearts set on the ways of your world. And God, we pray a special prayer this day on all those who are hurting and lost. We ask that you open our eyes to see the pain in others' lives and give us the courage and the strength to know when to step in, when to offer love, when to share of the salvation we have found in you. For we trust, O Lord, that you will give us the words. All we have to do is listen. And God, we pray a special prayer this day on all those who are living in fear and trembling, for those whose lives are surrounded by violence and uncertainty. We pray for all those who are surrounded by war, and we pray for the world leaders, O Lord, that they may see with your eyes and lead with your vision of peace here on earth. God, we trust in your promises, and we are excited to see where you will call us this week. And we are ready to step out into the unknown, for we know that you go with us, that your Holy Spirit surrounds us, and that your love never leaves us. And God, we ask that you lead us now in the prayer that your Son taught us to pray, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Before I go into the scripture, each week I always want to say, I think the reciting of the Lord's Prayer may be one of my favorite moments of worship because I love hearing all our different voices praying together to God, and I think it makes God smile. Our scripture for this morning, we continue in Mark, but if you've been here, you'll notice that we have jumped ahead. We've been in the first chapter of Mark for the last several weeks, and now all of a sudden we're in Mark 9. And this Sunday, if you don't know that this Sunday is known as Transfiguration Sunday, it's the last Sunday before we enter the season of Lent. And this is what Mark believed was most important for us to know as we are beginning this journey towards Lent. So listen now for a word from Mark. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one was with them anymore, but only Jesus. Hold on, it cut off part of the scripture. Sorry about that. So suddenly when they looked around, they saw no one was with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what this rising from the dead could mean. Here ends our reading according to Mark chapter 9. Thanks be to God. 
Amen. So as if you were driving, if you're here today, then you might have had the same experience I had, which there was a moment coming down Spear Avenue. This is the way I come to church, where I went to go into the tunnel, and it was so bright, the sun and the snow, that I couldn't see. And I kept saying, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. And then finally we rounded into the tunnel, and I could see again. But that dazzling brightness, that brightness that was blinding, I said to Eden, this may show up in a sermon. Because that light, that bright light that was so bright that I thought for a moment I might crash into the tunnel is kind of the only thing I can picture in my mind of what the disciples saw that day on the mountaintop. And as if you remember right before this in chapter 8, Jesus has just foretold his impending um, crucifixion and death and resurrection. And Peter kind of argued with him and didn't really understand it. And next thing we know, it says six days later. And we don't know exactly what happened in those six days. But we know it's six days later that we see Jesus going with Peter and James and John up on the mountaintop. They're taking a walk. There was a pastor that I served under in Owensboro, Kentucky. He was one of our interims. And people used to say, when Pastor Tom calls and asks to take a walk, say no. Because he would keep a list in his pocket. And whenever God spoke to him about something that came up, he would invite someone from that list to go take a walk. And typically by the time they came back, they had made a, a significant con um, financial contribution to the church. Or they had agreed to be board chair. Or they had agreed to run the capital campaign. So people knew when Pastor Tom called to take a walk, they were in trouble. But I think it was a little different here for the disciples. Jesus invited them to go on a walk, and we know that they walked a lot. So I don't know if they were expecting this to be anything different. The way I see it is they were just excited for some time alone with Jesus because they always had crowds around them. And I had thought about for the children's sermon today, if I'd brought a rope, I'd have done it of making a rope like the kids were climbing a mountain but this is a pretty small, this is about the mountain I can climb um, here before us. But this mountaintop, we know that when in the Bible, when people go to the mountaintop, exciting things happen. And here Jesus is with the three disciples and they're on top of the mountain and it says that they're by themselves and all of a sudden Jesus transfigured around them. I imagine it was like that light today on spear boulevard, that it was just so bright that they were basically blinded. For me, the vision I have, and I apologize, it's the best I have. I grew up in the 70s, but the vision that I have is Wonder Woman with her lasso when it went above her head. You know, she spun so fast that she transformed into Wonder Woman. Or Superman would go in to the phone booth and come out, he'd go in as Clark Kent and he'd come out as Superman. And then, like, amazing things happened. And like I said, I apologize for comparing Wonder Woman to Jesus, but it was about the good as I got with my Sunday morning cartoons as a child. And so, but then this vision, that's what I imagine, is that they, as it said, they were terrified. They didn't know what was happening. But they knew that it was something amazing. And maybe my favorite Peter moment of all times, because I know this would be me, Peter doesn't know what to do, so he just starts gibbering. He's so uncomfortable, he's so terrified that he just starts talking, Rabbi, man, it's good we're here, isn't it? Look what we're seeing. I'm going to buy a temple. I'm going to build some stones. How many of us, when we are uncomfortable... When we don't know what to say, instead of just sitting quietly, we start to talk. Yeah, amen. Don't be ashamed. You're in good company. I think that's why I became a pastor. 
But you make me uncomfortable. You put me in a situation where I am uncomfortable, and I am sure to say something stupid. It's like one of the guarantees. Life, death, taxes, and Nikki will say something dumb. And Peter, by God, Peter does it for us. Because here he is witnessing the most amazing moment in his life. And he says, hold on, Jesus, I want to talk to you about this right now. When Ezekiel was about five or six years old, he had gotten up from, oh, he was younger than that, probably four years old. He'd woken up from nap time. And I was in the back of the house doing something, and I heard him talking And back then, our old dog, who's now gone on to glory, was just a little puppy, about two, three years old. And I came down the hall not really paying attention to what I was interrupting. But I found Ezekiel laying in front of our dog crate, and he was telling Soppy about Jesus. And he was saying, when you get big enough, you'll get baptized, just like I'll get baptized. And when we get baptized, we go into the water. And Daddy talks about it all the time at church. And then there's God, and there's Jesus, and then there'll be angels. And I walked down the hall, and I heard it. But in my mind, I said, what are you doing? Did you finish nap? I didn't listen. Instead, I came right out and started talking. And I missed A sacred moment, a sacred moment of God and little Ezekiel and my dog. So often we miss the moments because we can't be quiet. Either our mouth has to keep talking or our brain has to keep going. And we miss these moments, these transfiguration moments moments that can come in and change our life in a second. Now, we may not get to be on a mountain with Jesus when he transfigures into this dazzling white, but we do experience moments of sacredness when we know we are standing in the presence of God. And sometimes we catch it. And sometimes we're like Peter. And we say, man, it sure is good we're here right now. Let's not forget this. Today, I think more often we miss moments because we're behind our phone, trying to take a picture to catch the perfect moment. And in trying to take that picture, we miss the moment. I'm so guilty. It happens time and time again for me. And yet it's why Peter starts jabbering as this moment's going on. Peter's just talking away. And what does God do? God interrupts and says, it's not about you, Peter. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. I can't tell you how many times I've read The scripture, I have preached on this scripture many times throughout my life in ministry. The scripture is found in Mark. The same story is found in Matthew. It's also found in Luke. And on Friday, I'm just telling you a true story here about myself. When Pamela and I were working on the bulletin and she showed me a graphic and it said, listen to me, I said to her, I don't remember that being in the scripture. I don't remember that being in the scripture I could have told you this entire scripture and I would have left out listen to me what do you think I need to work on listening to God because I think that's part of the most profound moment in this entire scripture is that God speaks and said it is not about what you have to say right now This is not about you. In my mind, God was showing Peter, James, and John what was to come. 
that Jesus wasn't just another great guy doing great work, but that Jesus is the glory of God made real in the world. And it was just a, a foretaste, just a vision of what was to come with Jesus' death and resurrection. And what God spoke is, this is my son, my beloved, listen to him. As I mentioned, this Wednesday we begin our journey to the cross at Easter, we begin Lent. And Lent is a 40-day journey, and you take out the Sundays, that's how you get to 40 days. But it's a 40-day journey to the cross. And on Ash Wednesday, if you gather here, you will receive the sign of a cross on your forehead with ashes and be said to you, from dust you came and to dust you shall return. It is a day that we look our mortality in the face, knowing that one day we will each take our last breath. It's one of the few guarantees we have, is that we will not live forever in these bodies but we will live forever with God in heaven. And I think as we enter this season of Lent, it is more important than ever that we hear this, this call on our life of this is my son, my beloved, listen to him. This Lenten season, I pray that we can all make a little space to really listen to God, to listen to what Jesus is telling us to do. We have a lot of different messages in the world coming at us all the time, and most of them are divisive and telling us not to trust one another and not to trust organized religion and not to trust God. And yet God speaks on a mountaintop so long ago and says, this is my son, my beloved. Listen to him. In closing, I want to share one story because it's the greatest story I, can, I know of in my personal life of transfiguration in someone's life. And I'll tell it briefly without a lot of detail. But it's the one time that I can say that I stood in a sacred space and watched as Jesus transformed and transfigured. It was the day that Canaan died. And I remember as he was taking his last few breaths, there was a moment where he opened his eyes and he looked into the distance and there was the greatest peace I have ever seen on anyone's face. And I said to him in that moment, Jesus is calling, you can go. And he left. But what I know to be truth is in that moment, I am certain that he saw the bright light of the transfigured Jesus. I am certain that he felt God say, welcome home. This is my beloved. This is my son. And if it is true in that moment, I know it's got to be true for each and every one of us that when we get there to our final day, our final breath, we will not be alone. But we will be surrounded by the transfigured Jesus in dazzling bright lights with the heavenly chorus around us ready to welcome us home. This story of God, this moment on the mountaintop, it was true so long ago, but did you hear how the scripture ends? They don't stay up on that mountaintop, right? It says they went back down the mountain. They went back down into their real lives. They had seen the glory of God on that mountaintop. They had seen it with their own eyes. And Jesus says, don't tell anyone, not yet. You can tell them when I've been risen from the dead. 
Jesus was with them on that mountaintop, and Jesus was with them as they descended down that mountain, and Jesus was with them in the everyday realness of their everyday lives. The transfigured Jesus is as live today in our lives as he was so long ago. And when we stand there before God on our final day, may we hear, this is my son, my daughter, and whom I am well pleased. Welcome home. I trust and hope that each of us as we prepare on our Lenten journey this week, as we begin with Ash Wednesday and follow the 40 days of Lent, may we trust what was said in Mark chapter 9, knowing that it was as true then as it is today, that God loves us so much that he sent his only son so that we may have everlasting life. Trust in the promises, for they are true. Thanks be to God. Amen. We invite you to join with us as we sing our hymn of invitation. Today we'll be singing Shine, Jesus, Shine. stand as you're able. opportunity to give back to God just a small portion of the many blessings God brings into our lives each and every day. We have the opportunity to give either online through Givelify, there's lock boxes in the back of the sanctuary and by the cookie table. We also have um, plates right in the back and today I'm going to ask Pamela at the end of the service will you stand by the door with a plate 
And if someone would rather put their money into a plate, you can do that as you're leaving today. Um, but we, this opportunity to give to God, it's a joy. And it's an honor to be able to give back to God a portion of our time and our gifts and our treasures. So I pray today and always that we will do so generously with hearts overflowing with joy. Let us now join our voices together in the doxology, which is printed on the screen. God, we thank you for this opportunity to give back a small portion of the many gifts you bring into our lives each and every day. God, we ask that you bless these gifts and you bless those able to give today and those unable to give. Lord, we hope that these gifts will help usher peace here on earth. For it's in your loving name we pray. Amen. We've come now to the main event. The reason we gather, which is to share in this supper of our Lord Jesus the Christ. And we know that just like Peter so long ago, that even when we stand in the presence of God, sometimes we just don't know it. Or sometimes our fear and our worries or the voices in our heads make it so loud that we miss the miracles happening right in front of us. And so we come to this table each and every week so that we can practice, so that we can practice for eternity. For we know when we take of the bread, we remember Christ's table so long ago when he gathered with those disciples and he broke bread with them and he said, when you take this, do so in remembrance of me. And we know that when we take the cup, we are practicing. We are practicing for eternity. For we take this each and every week because we know that we cannot continue on our own strength, but we need the strength of Jesus Christ. We need the community of the Holy Spirit and the community of one another to help us to keep going. Because some days are really hard and other days are harder than that. And so we come to this table each and every week to get the courage, the strength, and as a reminder that we are part of something far greater than ourselves, that we are loved by a God who loved us so much that he sent his son to the cross and then to resurrection so that we may have eternal life. So as we come to the table today, know that you are welcomed and invited to come just as you are, with your warts and your failures and your mistakes and your worries and your insecurities. For here, when we take the bread, we will experience the Christ. And when we drink the cup, we will be reminded of our salvation. So won't you come today and taste and see that indeed God is good. Come and enjoy the true welcome table. Amen. You may remain seated as we sing our communion hymn, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. Saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. 
Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, his mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. The Lord has promised good to me, his word my hope secures. As long as life endures, my chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing my chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace, unending love, amazing family. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning thanking you for the opportunity that we have every week to remember you with the cup and the bread. Thank you so much for sending your son to take our place and to raise again so that we can have eternal life. Lord Jesus, we thank you for all that you do for us. And as we enter this season of Lent, give us a reminder each day so that we can remember. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Lord Jesus on the night in which he was betrayed took a loaf of bread and after giving thanks he blessed it and broke it and said this is my body which is broken for you take in remembrance of me in the same manner he took the cup and after giving thanks he said this cup is a new covenant of my blood which is shed for the forgiveness of sins 
As often as you drink of this cup, do so in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now that we've shared in the Lord's Supper, we're going to sing our closing hymn for the month of February, which is We've Come This Far by Faith. You can find it on page 533 in your hymnals or up on the screen. Please stand as you're able. We've come this far by faith. today. Um, just a reminder before you go, make sure you stop by the fellowship table and grab a couple cookies. Lent starts Ash Wednesday at noon here in the sanctuary. Invite a friend to join you on this Lenten journey um, and let's see what God can create. So let us join together in our benediction. Go forth knowing that the love of Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit, and the compassion of God goes with us each and every step along our journey of faith. Go in peace to love and serve one another. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.